Welcome one and all to another day here at the Damage Board. I am John Iderola and I'm very excited to welcome to the show in the fall to that GOP debate. One of my favorite people around, comedian, commentator, all around nice guy, Maz Chabrani. Who, Maz, I hear you are touring. Where can people see you next? John, first of all, great to be back on with you. And where can people see me? I am on tour all the time. I'll be in Portland and Seattle next weekend. I'll be in Las Vegas right before Christmas. I'll be in Irvine. I'll be in New York. I'll be in Boston. Then go to mazjobrani.com. Get all the dates. Come out. Let's laugh just a little bit. Just a little bit. Come on, people. <laughs> can we fit in a laugh or two, everyone? Well, I think we can. I think perhaps we'll even do that. Here on the show, but we'll have to see. Um, but yeah, you're you're touring all over the place. So everybody out there, you got no excuse. He's gonna be in your neighborhood. Go check it out. Um, where should they go to find out more about your schedule and possible pickup tickets? So my website is just put my full name, mazjobrani.com, M-A-Z-J-O-B-R-A-N-I.com. You find tickets there. They can follow me on socials, but the the best place where you have the all the cities coming up is at mazjobrani.com. And I am literally nice. going to every city except for Tuscaloosa. Yeah, you haven't fit that one. Maybe next tour. Next tour. Maybe you can do it then. Yeah. Um, but anyway, we've got a lot that we're going to be talking about. Everybody, I want you to buckle yourself up very securely as we launch into this. And uh, before we get started, definitely hit the like button, share the stream if you're on a platform where that makes any sense. And with that said, I think it's time once again to take stock of the Republican primary field. I'm not I'm not a candidate. You want me to work that for you? <laughs> This is my kids would say, that's my jam. Oh, it's a clown show. And it was a televised clown show last night with the fourth GOP debate, which I found to be the most compelling. Um, not everyone had a great experience. Nikki Haley was the target of a lot of attacks almost instantaneously. And we want to show you just a little bit of how that looked in practice. So take a look at this. The only person more fascist than the Biden regime now is Nikki Haley, who thinks the government should identify every one of those individuals with an ID. That is not freedom, that is fascism, and she should come nowhere near the levers of power, let alone the White House. I, I, They're both hitting you on it. I would be happy to, and I love all the attention, fellas. Thank you for that. She said that I have a woman problem. Nikki, I don't have a woman problem. You have a corruption problem. And I think that that's what people need to know. Nikki is corrupt. This is a woman who will send your kids to die so she can buy a bigger house. Thank you. Governor Haley, would you like to respond? No. It's not worth my time to respond to him. You have been using identity politics at every step. Uh, Governor Haley, would you like to respond? Would you like to perhaps scribble something stupid on a piece of paper? We we have time. You have 45 seconds to scribble whatever stupid thing you want on a piece of paper. So uh, look, that was uh, Ramaswamy, like a lot of them, really worried about Nikki Haley, who seems to be moving up in the polls. She's in state polls already eclipsing Ron DeSantis in a few of them and uh, nationally is growing very close. So they're throwing out a lot of different attacks. Some of them I think are pretty safe saying she's corrupt. That's gonna bother a lot of Republicans. Some of what you saw from Ramaswamy, I think, is a bit riskier, though. There is a risk in labeling her as a fascist because that might end up being very appealing to Republican primary voters. But anyway, Maz, what did you think about that? And uh, Nikki Haley's seemed like her star is on the rise. What do you think? First of all, I, the reason I said I'm not going to Tuscaloosa is that's where the debate was, isn't it? Wasn't it? It was in Alabama. So wherever they are, was, I'm not yes. going. Yeah, because that is true. here's. Here's what's crazy. This is what's crazy. This is what's this is what's happened because of the Trump presidency. What's happened is we are rooting for Nikki Haley. We are rooting for Chris Christie. We're rooting for Liz Cheney. <laughs> That's how bad it's gotten. Where you're like, oh, I hope I hope Nikki Haley catches up to Trump and and beats him. <laughs> I mean, that's how bad it's gotten. So right off the right off the bat, it's just. It's such a strange world we're living in because once you start then looking at Nikki Haley's policies, you go, oh, no, she's a bad person or Christie or any of them. Um, but it's entertaining to watch them go after each other. Debates tend to be like this, and um, it's entertaining. R Ramaswamy, I'm, I'm surprised he's still in there. And by the way, he's got so uh, he's trying so hard to be the Indian Trump. But it's funny to me because the Trump folks, once they find out he's Indian, they're not going to vote for him. I mean, they don't like brown people. I'm a, I'm a, I'm from Iran. I, I'm an immigrant. So I mean, they they know, but they don't know. They're probably like, oh, this name, this, that, the other. If Ramaswamy were somehow able to 
get there. I honestly think there would be some people who would say, I can't, I'm not going to, I'm not going to vote for some Arab, even though he's <laughs> Indian. I think I, there, there would definitely be that confusion. I think uh, there's sort of a micro version I can definitely see, which is it's all well and good for Vivek Ramaswamy to be in fourth place or maybe even third place. And and he's not even really running against Donald Trump. He's just trying to kneecap anyone who is actually trying to replace Donald Trump. But were he to get into second place, then we'd see what Donald Trump would have to say about Vivek. Vivek, he wants to become more popular. But he better hope he doesn't become too popular during this race because that could end up being fatal for him against Donald Trump. Um, but you are, I think, 100% correct to point out the racial aspect of this um, because uh, Ramaswamy is not the only person who's worried about Nikki Haley. Charlie Kirk tweeted, the future of the GOP must not be Nimarada, anything but Nimarada. You see what you see what he's doing there? Her, away, her name's not actually Nikki, it's Nimarada. And that by itself is the entire argument against her. Did you know that she has a different name? It can't be that person who's, this is, all, it's just, that's nothing but, there's no cover story, that's racism. That's all that that is, that's all it's designed to appeal to. And honestly, it doesn't make any sense, but Vivek Ramaswamy has also been emphasizing that her name is Nimarada instead of Nikki. He is the, is the child of Indian immigrants and he's trying to inject a little bit of like, mm, isn't it a little bit weird that she's got an Indian name? I don't understand how this racism even works, but it, they seem to think that it's a, a valid tactic. Well, it's because it is, you see, because it is. I had this conversation with somebody uh, during the 2016 election and it's racism and it's sexism as well. I was talking to someone who was saying uh, that they that they didn't necessarily like Trump, but they didn't vote for Hillary because she was a woman. And similarly, you're going to run into people who definitely on the right who are going to say, I would never vote for someone who's an immigrant because they have no trust of immigrants, even though neither Nikki nor Vivek are immigrants, their parents are. Um, and, and it's just, it's sickening and it's so bold faced. And it's, we're living in an era now where it's okay. They accept it. Remember when Donald Trump said that Mexicans are rapists and, and drug dealers and everyone was like, oh my gosh, oh my gosh, that's how, how this is not going to go any further. Fast forward six, seven years later, Univision is giving him an exclusive on their network and throwing him softballs and giving him love. Even, yeah. even the Latino network is praising him and and being against its it the, the policies that would affect its own uh constituents so here we are uh an indian someone of indian descent going after someone else from indian descent uh charlie kirk going after everybody because he's just a piece of crap um but it's to be expected and we're not shocked anymore and that's what's crazy like we yeah. should at least the, the one thing we should stand up for is we should say look let's judge the person on the person's character on their experience on their ability i think we all want what's best for our country so we're going to vote in whatever fashion we think that is but the fact that in 2023 you can still say don't for the don't vote for the brown person mm -hmm. and that's going to work is really a yeah. sad state of affairs but but perhaps there is a little bit of evolution that you also have a brown person saying that a Yes, another brown part. So we yes. are living in interesting <laughs> times, I suppose. Anyway, uh, that's Nikki Haley, and um, she was attacked a lot. Chris Christie actually stood up for her a little bit, saying that the um, I, I would say fairly sexist attacks against her and her intelligence or whatever, um, saying that she's a smart, accomplished woman. You should stop insulting her. By the way, you you can just point out where she's wrong on policies, and there's about a billion of them. She's a neocon, like that. She is argue against that. Saying that you think that she's stupid or whatever, like she's not stupid. She's wrong in a lot of ways. Yeah, corrupt, but stupid simply because she's a woman. Um, I think it makes sense that Christy uh, defended her. Uh, Christy there is pointlessly trying to elevate the discourse, and he was trying to like get Ramaswamy to stop doing this. Ramaswamy then turned to Chris Christie, saying that Chris Christie should walk himself off the stage, quote, have a nice meal and get the hell out of this race. That's subtle. You get it? Because Chris Christie's fat and Ramaswamy isn't, at least as of right now. Uh, and so you shouldn't support Chris Christie, not because he's out of step with the Republican electorate in a lot of different ways. 
but because he's heavy, which none of the voters are. So it's a super safe thing to mock <laughs> him for. But anyway, um, look, this this has been a primary, and it's a you know, it, it's a our political system is pretty vicious. But Ramaswamy really just has landed on this annoying twerp personality. <laughs> That I don't, I don't know why it's as popular as it, as it is. But what do you think? Well, it goes back again to the to the field and the world we're living in now. They like Donald Trump being an insult comic, or you know, the, the insult people. You know, be the Don Rickles of 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 politics. Um, Don Rickles was funny. Donald Trump is dangerous. And there used to be a time, if you remember, that. Up and coming politicians, newer politicians would mimic each other's movements. Remember this move where you would do mm -hmm. your fist and you would make the thumb? A lot of politicians use that. That was what they were adapting. Oh, this works. This makes me look like I'm serious and presidential and making a point. Now, go after the guy's weight. Go after how dumb the woman is. Go after the uh, you know the, the 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 other guy wearing heels. Actually, Vivek didn't go after the other guy wearing heels because Vivek is also short. But the point is. It's this horrible world that we're living in where these people realize in order to get the attention of the Donald Trump constituents, they need to get meaner and meaner. They need to get more racist and get more sexist. The, the, the more vile they are, the more yeah. they're going to be cheered. And it's this crazy world that we're living in that, quote unquote, serious Republicans don't see this as ripping their party apart. And mm -hmm. it's just gonna we're we're creating the Frankenstein and we're singing now the 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 new generation of Frankenstein's coming in and it's not getting any better and it and it would require the serious Republicans whoever they are to say guys we're losing our party and eventually the country because of this mess yeah 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 the the next generation is always going to be more crude like. You know, you had you had the wackadoodles of like the Tea Party come in, and then eventually you have Marjorie Green, oh, yeah. and then what comes after Marjorie Green? Like I've been saying for a couple of years, Marjorie Green at some point is going to seem responsible and respectful compared to the people who are being uh, inspired by her to run for office. Well, that's what anyway. I said at the beginning. Is at the beginning we are now we are now supporting Liz Cheney. We're now supporting. Chris are rooting for Chris Christie, Nikki Haley, these people whose policies yeah. are horrible. Now they seem normal. Remember, everyone was like, oh, gosh, I wish we could have George W. Bush back. You know, yeah, George that's Bush crazy. Yeah. I mean, how crazy is that? But the, but you're right in a few years. Oh, yeah. Well, um, look, we, we've mentioned Trump. Uh, it's time we turn to that. There were four Republicans on the debate stage, but the fifth, the one who's actually leading, wasn't there. And uh, they didn't honestly even talk about him very much, which I thought was weird. Chris Christie also thought it was weird. Take a look at this. And except for your little speech in the beginning, we've had these three acting as if the race is between the four of us. The fifth guy who doesn't have the guts to show up and stand here. He's the one who, as you just put it, is way ahead in the polls. And yet, I've got these three guys who are all seemingly to compete um, with, you know, Voldemort. He or shall not be named. They don't want to talk about it. The, the fact is that when you go and you say the truth about somebody who is a dictator, a bully, who has taken shots at everybody, whether they've given him great service or not over time, who dares to disagree with him. Then I understand why the these three are timid to say anything about it. Maybe it's because they have future aspirations. Maybe those future aspirations are now, or maybe they're four years from now. But the fact of the matter is, the truth needs to be told. So look, he's right. There was very little actual criticism. There was occasionally like they would say, he didn't get the wall, but I will. Or they might acknowledge that he added a ton of money to the national debt. But that's that's largely it. And their lack of willingness to truly criticize Trump at certain points became almost cartoonish. Uh, take a look at this when they're debating whether Trump is mentally fit to be president. Saying Donald Trump is no longer mentally fit to be president. Is that what you think? Look, he, he is showing, father time is undefeated. The idea that we're gonna put someone up there that's almost 80 and there's gonna be no effects from that, we all know that that's not true. The question was very direct. 
Is he fit to be president or isn't he? The rest of the speech is interesting, but completely non-responsive. And if we were in a courtroom, they'd strike the answer and say, Governor DeSantis. No, they you're wouldn't. A smart, they would say that you're a they, smart they would man. Argue that the, no, they would. No, they wouldn't. They would Chris. strike the answer no, they would. because you're not answering you it. Just is he don't fit? Like, you, is have he fit? Your, you have no. your thing. Is he you fit or is he? No, I don't have my thing. We don't. He's the thing. Is we he do fit not or is he? You're that's talking about him being 80, 80, 80 years old. It doesn't old. mean that somebody is he fit? Yeah, so look, that that followed a 90 second answer by Ron DeSantis where he refused to say it. He said we shouldn't have someone so old, father time, blah, blah, blah. But he wouldn't say yes or no, is he fit? And so Chris Christie tried to get him to, he never ended up giving a yes or no answer. And for some reason, the debate moderators, despite getting an assist from Chris Christie, did not put him on the spot to actually provide an answer to that. And and at this point, I don't even understand. He's saying he's too old. He's saying father time, blah, blah, blah. Just say he's not fit or say that he's say that he's fit, but wrong. You know, he shouldn't be disqualified for the state of his mind, but you can draw your own conclusions about some of the stuff that he says. He wouldn't take a stand at all because he's terrified of it being used against him. And that sort of like fearful approach to campaigning is why he's not doing that well. He just doesn't have the strength, the confidence, the presence. He doesn't have it. Maz, what do you think? Zero charisma, and just to do an analogy, this is like the clock is running out on the football game. You're 90 yards away, Mm -hmm. and you go, you know what? Let's run the ball. I'm just going to give you the ball. There's a fourth down, fourth down and 20. I'm just going to hand it to my running back and let him run for a few yards (laughs) because that's it. I'm playing it safe. It's time to go for a Hail Mary, Ron DeSantis. You got to be throwing bombs and going for it and going after him. First of all, that's again what the Republican Republican constituents like. So maybe if they all got down and dirty with Donald, maybe I mean there's going to be a lot of them are going to be like, "How dare you? He's our Messiah." It's called a personality. We know it's a cult right now. But maybe mm-hmm. there's some people that'll break through if he goes at it with some facts. Because the fact is, if you're going to criticize Donald Trump, his age should be the last thing on the list. I agree that He's too old. But there's so many other things he's done, and he's so unqualified. How about mishandling of coronavirus? How about trying to overthrow democracy? How about continuing to lie? How about being a liar and a cheater and a thief and a stealer his whole life? How about uh, um, uh, the two impeachments and and, and the, what led to the first one of him trying to ask a foreign government to interfere with 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 our elections how about putting kids in cages how about, I mean, it goes on and on and on and on and every one of those if all four of those people were on that stage going after him perhaps one of them would have a chance but they're yeah. all they're all too cowardly except for uh, uh christy to do so yeah i look those are all amazing avenues for attack for someone else to do to appeal to a base that doesn't exist the, the reality is that it would be like if Darth Vader tried to beat Emperor Palpatine in an election and by pointing out that they like Palpatine hunted down the Jedi and he built the Death Star and he blew up Alderaan. Yeah, but you did too. And you said that that stuff was awesome for years. Like there's all these amazing things that should be really good to, to use, but you can't. You brought up COVID. Ron DeSantis also tried to pretend that COVID uh, was an issue, which is why, uh, you know, damn near 100,000 people in Florida died from COVID, including one of my family members. He said that the election was stolen. You know, he's buttressed all of these lies and all of these failings. He can't attack him on all the crimes that he committed because this entire time he's been a part of saying that it's just the Democrats, the deep state, and it's Joe Biden trying to steal another election. So, like, they have gradually, like, they're they're in a straitjacket that they've been putting on for years. And at this point, I don't even think it's accurate to say that Ron DeSantis is running for president. He's doing one of two things. He's either like hoping kind of like Gavin Newsom, maybe something happens, a comet hits Trump and then I can be president. Or he's just trying to get through this thing, keeping his name in the news, but not getting attacked too much and doing this stuff to attack Trump would potentially destroy his reputation. And then in 2028, he could run again. Although if Trump loses this time around, I will remind everyone, there's nothing stopping Trump from running in 2028. I know he'll be a billion, but that didn't stop him this time. So I, Ron DeSantis is like technically running for president, but he can't do any of the things that I agree. He has all of those Hail Marys, he can't throw.
Yeah, that's a good point. You're absolutely right. I, 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 I didn't think of it that way. You're absolutely right about that. Um, but there's got to be some places they could pivot to to go after him in whatever format they want. I mean, they could even say, oh, he just said that he wants to be a dictator. Or they can say mm-hmm. that, um, you know, he's been having he was inviting uh, uh, Nazi sympathizers to come to his to, to his to Mar-a-Lago to eat with whatever they want to. go. There's there's things they can go after. There's just no shortage of things to go after. And for him to keep saying father time, father time, father time. It's just so vanilla. It's so dis- Santis, it really is. Yeah. It's this guy. This guy's got zero zero chutzpah. Zero zero. Like the, he, he, he doesn't inspire. He's mm-hmm. he's doesn't inspire. He perspires. That's that should be his tagline. <laughs> Ron DeSantis. I don't inspire. I perspire. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Ron DeSantis. Kind of damp. Honestly. Yeah. yeah. Anyway, um, I, I want to turn to just a couple more quick videos. We don't have much time, but there was a moment that certainly stood out to me on the debate stage where I thought for a second, wait, did Alex Jones just bum rush the stage? Let's jump into this from Vivek Ramaswamy. If you want somebody who's going to speak truth to power, then vote for somebody who's going to speak the truth to you. Why am I the only person on the stage, at least, who can say that January 6th now does look like it was an inside job? That the government lied to us for 20 years about Saudi Arabia's involvement in 9-11. That the great replacement theory is not some grand right-wing conspiracy theory, but a basic statement of the Democratic Party's platform. That the 2020 election was indeed stolen by big tech. That the 2016 election, the one that Trump won for sure, was also one that was stolen from him by the national security establishment (laughs) that actually put up the Trump-Russia collusion hoax that they knew was false. There's a reason why I'm the only person on the stage who can say these things. That's what it's going to take, not people who were licking his boots one time and now Monday morning quarterbacking and criticizing (laughs) when it's convenient. I agree with Ramaswamy that there is a reason that he's, I guess, the only one that can say those things because he has no obligation to, like, he has no future, I guess, in elected politics. He doesn't have to worry about the fact that he just listed all of the conspiracy theories he could think of and said that he supports all of them might hurt him in future elections. Like, there was a lot there. You know, they stole 2020, they stole 2016 even, which I thought Trump won technically. Nope. Nope, that was actually stolen too. January 6th was an inside job by the FBI to lock up a bunch of Antifa, because that's what the crowd was, they tell us. So it's weird that the FBI would do that. And why does he care then? Why does he care that the FBI? Look, the whole thing is just utter insane nonsense. But Ramaswamy, I think in that answer, demonstrates the true future of the party. Like Ron, People like Ron DeSantis are willing to dabble in that stuff. Certainly the conspiracy theories that attack the LGBTQ community, everything. But the outright Alex Jonesification of the Republican Party, like that is so much the next phase. And Ramaswamy, I think, is on the cutting edge of that. What do you think? Well, you know, it's interesting because when he says that they even stole the 2016 election or tried to, even though Trump won, that's another thing that we would point out at when they were talking about how the 2020 election was stolen. You go, oh, that's interesting. So you're saying that anywhere Trump lost, there was cheating, but anywhere he won, there was no cheating. And somehow Mm -hmm. there was places where he lost, but the down ballot was won by the Republicans. So there was cheating on that one, but not cheating on the rest. The problem with these narratives with these with these conspiracy theories is these the results don't fit your narrative so now you got to bend yourself in all kinds of shapes and and figures to try and make it seem like the way you see the world is definitely the right way it's definitely the truth and therefore the election was stolen and therefore antifa and uh, january 6th was all i mean the it's crazy when you sit there and you go we saw with our own eyes these people show up and do what they did and they've been interviewed and they've been prosecuted and they've been put in front of uh, um uh, interrogations and all kinds of stuff and they've admitted to it they've admitted to being there for the cause of their leader who told them to show up it's going to be wild they admit all that stuff and yet somehow yeah. these people are such great actors these people are the daniel day lewises of, <laughs> of 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 protesters that's these these people are a bunch of antifa daniel day lewises who've convinced everybody that they're actually yeah. 
you know, that they're Trumpers, but in reality, they're just great actors. It's so bonkers. And for someone from Rama, like Ramaswamy, who comes from a great education and, and seems to be smart, for these guys to go down that rabbit hole, you realize that there really is, that really, can, he cannot genuinely believe this stuff. And if he mm -hmm. does, then we're in a sadder and sadder state of affairs. You, you're having more and more Ted Cruz's and Josh Hawley show up in the world now. Yeah. Yeah, 100%. You're right. He's very well educated. He's clearly smart. So if you're conservative watching this, I need you to understand that he is another Tucker Carlson. He doesn't believe any of this stuff. He just thinks that you're stupid enough to. He has no respect for you. And so he is pretending to believe things that he thinks the rubes believe, just like Tucker Carlson was revealed to in those text messages. He doesn't believe any of this stuff. Uh, by the way, if it was an inside job, why did Trump wait so long to put out any statement? He should have been horrified by the fact that a bunch of Antifa inspired by the FBI was ruining a day that he had no intention of trying to do a coup or anything. Instead, he waited hours and hours and then only begrudgingly put out a video saying that he loved the FBI provocateurs. Apparently, none of this makes any sense. And I'll close with this about Ramaswamy. I love him wanting to sort of like have his cake and eat it too, that he repeatedly, and in that video, you saw it, was hitting the for licking Trump's boots when he will not attack Trump on virtually anything. And every one of those conspiracy theories, almost every single one, is a conspiracy theory that has been spread and accepted by the right to apologize for Trump's failures. Like that's why you have to say all the stuff about why 2016 should have been in better form and 2020 was stolen. And look what they did to him on January 6th. You're spinning conspiracy theories to lick Donald Trump's boots. But he also wants to hit the others for it. So it's, and, it's massively hypocritical. And John, a quick point, you asked a logical question. That's the problem with these conspiracy theories. When you point something logical out, why did he sit there for a couple hours and not send anybody in? They have, they have answers and you can't speak logically to them. So they'll tell you, well, actually he offered up 10,000 troops the day before. Nancy Pelosi said she doesn't want him because she was in on it. And it just, it just, it just spirals and spirals and spirals. You go, okay, well, then what about the day of? Why didn't he just call them in right away? Well, because yeah. what they were assessing it and, you know, Mike Flynn's brother was trying to make it, I mean, it happen. And it's so, you know, when, when, when Tucker got those clips of January 6th and then he showed like, he showed like the video of the the back of the building where no, where people no one's there. I was I, I always said I said I could take video footage of the 9/11 terrorists and just show them kind of going through the airport and be like, look, it was just a, yeah. it was just there was just tourists. They didn't do anything. I'm not showing the crime. I'm showing everything else. And that's what these conspiracy theorists are trying to do. And it's nuttier and nuttier. Um, yeah. And and I and I do hope that that everyone involved does go to jail. Yeah, Maz, honestly, you can prove that the Twin Towers were not taken out by just stopping the video before the plane hits. You just show the part where it's standing, and I guess that proves it is so condescending to everyone's intelligence. But that is what they're attempting to do. Yeah. Okay, we're we're way over. We're gonna take our first break. When we come back, we're gonna take stock of the other side of this with Biden. We'll be back with that in a sec. Okay, everybody. Well, that's the GOP. And last night on the forum, we talked about the contenders to Joe Biden. Well, let's talk a little bit about Joe Biden now, starting with this. Do you think there is any Democrat who could defeat Donald Trump other than you? Probably 50 of them. You do believe that there are? I'm not the only one to read it, but I will defeat him. Who else do you think could defeat Donald Trump as the president? Okay, so that is Joe Biden with a lot of confidence. Not only that he can definitely beat Donald Trump, but that 50 other Democrats could. I would say if 50 other Democrats could, then you don't have to actually run necessarily. But <laughs> uh, interestingly, he recently said the only reason he's running is because of Trump. He said, if Trump wasn't running, I'm not sure I'd be running. He said at the fundraiser, we cannot let him win. Look, he is running and I have to run. But now you're saying 50 other Democrats can beat him. And you said initially you'd only run for one term. So I'm getting some mixed messages there. You're acting as if you're our only defender, but you're saying there's a whole crowd of people that could wallop him. And the thing is, like, you've got your mixed messages. The messages from the polling is not mixed. It's looking bad, it's getting worse. 
His job approval is now down to 37%, eight points lower than it was at the start of just this year, three years into his presidential bid. And it's not difficult to figure out why. Roughly four in 10 Americans say the economy or the cost of living is the most important issue facing the country, and they don't like what he's done in that. Um, his job approval, still 72% among Democrats, 63% among liberals. That that was in the 80s too in January of just this year. And as we start to discuss this, let's bring up graphic five. You'll see it broken down into some other categories. These are these are really bad. Younger than 45, 33% approval. I, I would want to see polling on the other 50 Democrats at this point, I think. But Maz, what, what do you make of all this? Well, I think we all are kind of uh, in shock that out of a country of 330 million people, these two guys are the best we could do. Uh, not because of, you know, I think I think the Biden administration has done some good things, but age, age is really an issue, and we really should have a limit at, at the at the other end. And by the way, watching Joe Biden, you know, he still has obviously he's a smart person in general and he still has moments where you go oh wow he's still got it but just watching the way he walks i'm like gosh hmm. mick jagger's 80 i wish i wish he had mick jagger's jeans not his jeans you know what i'm saying his jeans <laughs> meaning like i wish he could like i wish he could mick jagger out of that place the way mick jagger just the, the stones just announced a new tour i mean so just the way he would look makes would inspire some confidence, yeah. but a lot of people don't have that confidence. Um, I understand the way people feel about the economy, but a lot of times when you really split, break it down, we've come a long way from the uh, inflation and everything else that we were that we were suffering from. Not to say we're where we need to be, but we've come a long way. And I think the Democrats haven't done as good of a job of presenting that case and saying, hey, things aren't as bad as they were and they're getting better with the investments and the infrastructure bill. They're not doing as good of a job of selling their points. How about the idea of uh, uh, the Republicans took a woman's right to choose away? That did well during the elections, the previous elections. They need to be pushing that some more. How about pushing more? They're yeah. trying to show this thing of like, if Trump wins, he would be a, uh, a dictator. They really got to drive that home that we would be living in the handmaid's tale. And by the way, Biden said he was only going to run for one term because he thought Trump was done. We all thought Trump was done. And yet this country is so backwards and these people are so backwards and the Republican Party are such cowards that when it was time to kind of put the knife in and get rid of this person that's, 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 that's damaged your party and damage the country. Instead, they didn't go for getting rid of him. They went and kissed the ring like That's McCarthy true. did down in Florida. So I think Biden's just as shocked that Trump's in it again and winning. Yeah, uh, I will be sure that Trump is done 10 to 15 years after he dies. <laughs> Until yeah. then, not so sure. But um, but you mentioned the the, the dictator angle. I actually want to do a little bit of an update uh, on that. So whenever we're ready, we can jump into this next story. We're about a day out from Donald Trump jokingly saying that he would be a dictator on day one. And do you really expect that the GOP is going to have an issue with that? They fall in line pretty readily. It was almost instantaneous in this case. Here is Senator Kevin Kramer of North Dakota being asked about his comments. Listen to this. You would never abuse power as retribution against anybody. Except for day one. Yeah. Except Look, one. He's going crazy. Except for day one. Meaning? I want to close the border and I want to drill. He says, you're not going to be a dictator, are you? I said, no, 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 other than day one. We're closing the border and we're drilling, drilling, drilling. After that, I'm not a dictator. So that, Senator, he made light of it. Is that what you want? Border closed? For sure, and and not only does he say he's going to do it, we know he will do yeah. it because he has done it. And many of the things that need to be done, he can do by executive order because they've been undone by executive That's order. Ex hmm. Okay, so really fast there, can we just acknowledge what happened? So sometimes we'll cover like media matters analysis of whether topics get discussed on the news. That's a little tricky pizzicky way to juice the numbers. She technically played the video, but her question, her question was, he made light of it. Do you want him to close down the border? That's that's not the important part of what he said. Why is that the thing that you're focusing on? And look, the substance is truly what matters. His 
kind of joking thing saying that he's gonna be a dictator. If that was the only thing that he had said or done in that area, wouldn't particularly matter. We could still be horrified by the fact that every time he said he would abuse power, be a dictator, the crowd loved it. That's worrying. But I don't need to see him say that he wants to be a dictator to be worried about the fact that he and everyone that's gonna be in his administration, as we'll talk about later on the show, is talking about rounding up journalists and going after his political opponents and everything, about rooting out 75% of the bureaucracy and hiring only loyalists. Him saying he'll be a dictator on day one is much less worrying than him sketching out like a whole plot outline for how the next four or maybe 40 years of his administration are gonna go. But Maz, what do you think? Well, first of all, that senator, one thing that he did point out, which is a little bit of a testament to the times, he said that, yeah, that Trump can change this stuff with executive order, and then Biden has executive orders, and the inconsistencies that we're going through now because Congress can't pass anything because they can't agree on anything. So we're going executive order to executive order. So for four years, we're one way, four years, another way, which is a bit of a problem because I think, especially foreign governments dealing with us, Go, well, where do we stand? Are we doing this policy? We're doing that policy or any agency trying to implement anything. It takes a few years to, to, to build it up. So if you, if we're not passing it in Congress and president's just got to do it, that's not the best way, I think, to proceed as a country, but that's the country we're in. That mm -hmm. said, I recall in 2016 as it was running, I, when he won, I tried to take a moment with my kids. They were younger there. We were in the car. I said, guys, we have to give him the benefit of the doubt. He said a lot of stuff, but maybe he said it. And I, I was skeptical, but I was still saying this. I go, maybe he said it just because he wanted to win. But now that he's the president, I said, this is the only country or one of the only countries where we have a peaceful transfer of power and we have to respect him as the president. Let's give him a chance to see how he does. And that weekend, he started tweeting about Alec Baldwin's performance on Saturday Night Live playing him. And I was like, this guy's an idiot. <laughs> <laughs> this guy is not going to, he's going to do everything he said. And then the next week, uh, Muslim ban. And then the next week, kids in cages. And then the next week, just more disaster after disaster. Even yeah. Dave Chappelle, I remember he did the monologue on Saturday Night Live and he even said, he goes, we got to give him a chance because he's the president. I remember a Republican friend of mine was like, wow, that was a great monologue because look, this guy's the president of the country. Let's give him a chance. And again, it just went yep. so far down. And so you have to listen to him when he's calling his political opponents vermin. And when he's saying we're going to go after them, when he's, when he's using actual Nazi language, he is someone who is trying to set something up that he would then, when he's done, he would just pass the presidency along to Donald Trump Jr. So if people yeah. aren't afraid of, if people aren't afraid of having Donald Trump as their president, think about the fact of having Donald Trump Jr. giving you weekly addresses all coked out of his mind <laughs> and just think about that and vote for Biden, please. Yeah. A guy who's running on just Coke, Red Bull, and hair gel. And that's his entire thing. Yeah, 100%. Um, I also just want to quickly point out because, like, he was, they're all cloaking the dictator thing in the, he's just talking about drilling and border security or whatever. I just want to remind everyone we are at record high US oil production right now. I don't think that that's a good thing. I don't want that, but that is what's going on. We are drilling so much oil. Has that solved our? Gasoline price problem? No, it's weird. It's almost as if when the companies drill the oil, they don't just package it up and ship it to Americans as some sort of tip or something. They sell it on the international oil market and it has effectively no effect on the price cents at most. It's not like we just get it or something. And Biden largely continued Donald Trump's border policies and immigration policies. We've been very critical of him for the past few years for exactly that reason. So he did all of that. He's not getting any credit for it. That's the way American politics works. Again, I don't like stuff. But if he's trying to appeal to the right wing, you'd think they'd at least notice that he's trying to do that. That said, um, you know, you have other Tom Tillis has no problem with what he said. Uh, even Mitt Romney sort of just like just brushes it aside as like a, a child being like exaggerating or being funny. Um, Liz Cheney is a little bit more concerned about it. Let's go to that. He says that he's going to take vengeance when he's elected again. He said even last night, 
Yes, I'm going to be a dictator for a day now. But see, I see what you're doing. Well, no, Wait, I'm just, now, but let me finish. What okay. you're doing is you're saying, oh, my gosh, well, that's just him. And the problem is we saw on January 6th the extent in the lead up to it, the fact that he is willing to ignore the rulings of our courts. So uh, Donald Trump has been trying to promise his base and uh, those who might support him that he is going to get retribution. He says for them, even though the people he's targeting have nothing to do with the Republican base, it's all people who have you know, run afoul of Donald Trump himself. And uh, he's gonna keep making the comments like he did with Sean Hannity. He's gonna be a dictator on day one. And we do know that the Democrats are going to try to make this a big part of the election. Joe Biden um, you know, put out a statement saying as Donald Trump escalates the stakes of this race, the media cannot shy away from covering his assault on our democracy, including people in his orbit threatening to jail the free press, which Sean Bannon, Bannon and Cash Patel were talking about earlier this week. So, um, Maz, we've talked about a few things that could be significant in the race, like the the topic of abortion once again, maybe his crimes. How big of a thing do you think concerns over the fate of democracy will be? I think Amer the American people have not experienced autocracy enough to realize how bad it really is. I come from Iran. Iran before '79 was um, uh, it was it, it was the Shah, the king, and it was it was he also was the leader, but there were some democratic norms there where women could dress as they pleased. Where um, they're, they're, they were being, the education was being spread to all in the country. There was a lot of good things happening. There were some bad things, but there were still a lot of good things happening. As soon as the totalitarian state took over, the Islamic Republic, it went dark. It went yeah. like women got to cover themselves. Um, uh, or, or they can be, as we saw uh, last year, Massa Amini, Massa Gina Amini, she, her hair was out of her hijab. They arrested her and then they, they killed her. Yeah. Um, so you end up with what you end up with is, and I, I, from statistics that I've, that I've read, a m majority of the Iranian people would rather have their freedom to dress how they please. Yes, there are those religious types who want women all to be covered, but there are a, mostly people who go, you should have that choice. Now that is very similar in a way to what happened here in America with Roe versus Wade, where we have a majority of Americans want a woman to have the right to choose, and yet a minority of people were able to impose their will on a majority. And you're just gonna run into more and more of that stuff. So uh, these autocratic governments go after the LGBTQ community, they go after religious minorities, they go after, if you're a religious minority, I hear people sometimes go, Oh, I love Trump and I'm uh, Jewish or I'm Muslim or I'm whatever the other religion is. I go, you think day two, they're not going to come after you. They're going to come after you. They said it in Charlottesville. They said Jews will not replace us. They, it's, it's mind blowing how little the American population is aware of what a, uh, an autocratic state would look like. And it's also mind blowing that they're listening to this, 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 this narcissistic psychopath tell you he's coming for you and they're not taking it seriously. They're just laughing yeah. and he's, he's, you know, he's mentally ill. Yeah, we're laughing our way to that dark future that you sketched out so well. Um, we're gonna take our second break of the hour though. Uh, when we come back, we actually have a little bit of good news in a topic where there doesn't seem to have been a lot of it over the past few years. So we're gonna reveal that after this break. Okay, everybody, We uh, first of all, if you're just joining us now, please, please hit the like button. We're gonna get into a little bit of good news. We have a little bit of a roadblock along the way, but there will be goodness after it. Let's get into it. They say, well, you know what we need is uh, criminal justice reform. Excuse me? Black crime is a major issue in our country. Why are you pushing criminal justice reform exactly? I, I long for the time when someone like Charlie Kirk would have had to cloak his views on race just a little bit. Uh, no, he feels very freed up to talk about it. Uh, he reads like a Breitbart <laughs> article about black crime. Um, here's the thing, there's a big focus by people like Charlie Kirk as well as the rest of the independent right wing media and the established right wing media. Um, they love talking about black crime, about urban crime. They love focusing on particular Democrat cities and Detroit I think is the one that gets the most focus. 
And because of that, because they keep talking about the crime there, I have to assume that Charlie Kirk is getting ready to do a big segment on the great news coming out of Detroit, which is that there was this two year partnership to reduce gun violence. And what do you know? It looks like Detroit is close to recording its fewest homicides in nearly 60 years. Back in 2018, the city had 261 homicides. That that at that point was its fewest number since 1966. Right now, at the beginning of this month, the city had 228. So homicides down 18%, non-fatal shootings down 13%, carjackings down 36%. And there's some other good numbers there too. But I also wanna point out that while it is great to point out that, oh, this year is going to have numbers that are lower than for many decades. I had the wrong opinion actually of homicide specifically in Detroit because the only time you ever hear about that stuff is from people like Charlie Kirk. I wanna show you a chart of homicide trends in Detroit since the late 80s. Take a look at this. It's look, you know, not every year is lower than the year before it, but the trend has been clear for literally decades where things have been getting better in terms of the most consequential violent crime. Why is that not something that is talked about? Why is that not the message that even people who pay attention to the news are getting? That yes, there's still a lot of crime and more needs to be done, but they have been succeeding over decades to reduce it and are now reaching record lows. Maz, what do you think about this? First of all, Charlie Kirk and Turning Point. I uh, my kids had gone to an elementary school called Turning Point, so I have T-shirts. And sometimes when I'm jogging <laughs> with Turning Point, I'm looking around. I'm looking at people and thinking, "Oh no! If anybody knows, <laughs> they're going to judge me." I was like, "This guy's ruined this amazing school's name by my naming his racist uh, organization Turning Point." Um, yeah, it's. <clears throat> You know, I, I anecdotally, I can say the last time I was in Detroit, I saw a lot of development. I saw people talking about um, other jobs and things coming into town. So clearly, I mean, it's it's just basic, right? When you when you put some kind of um, investment into communities, when you in, in you know inspire people to that they have a future. When you go after programs of you know lessening guns and lessening violence, you're going to end up with this with these results. And yet, like you said, we live in this world with the echo chambers where these people like Charlie Kirk and others who can take these clips and put it on YouTube and TikTok and wherever it ends up, and you're going to end up with a bunch of people saying, "Oh, look, the you know everything, the crimes are going up, going up, going up." It's the same thing with. The, the, the picture that David Brooks took of his meal at the airport. And he said, this meal cost me, I don't know, a hundred dollars or whatever it was. And then the person who was at the airport said, well, you had two drinks and the drinks have always cost at airports cost a lot more or the yeah. McDonald's, the cost of the McDonald's being $16 or whatever it is. They emphasize the negative because it fits their narrative. And then the people watching them nod their head and go, Joe Biden has ruined our economy and he's ruining the borders and he's ruining crime and all that other stuff. Um, and again, it goes back to what we said earlier, the Democrats got to do a better job of giving the statistics that you just gave in a very, very uh, uh, absorbable way for people to yep. go, oh, wow, this is actually happening. Wow, okay, Detroit's no longer the butt of every joke. It's It's a safer city, who knew? I didn't 100%. know, you just told me. Yeah, and 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 work has been done literally over decades. I agree. We need to just keep hammering this home. There's been some effort lately, especially talking about gun violence. Like, like the, the charts of where you're most likely in America to die as a result of gun violence. They would have you believe no, it's exclusively Detroit and maybe San Francisco or something like that. No, it's it, red states, red states, and you are far far safer in blue states. I'm sorry if you don't like that. What you don't like is reality though, that's what it is and this isn't new. Um but yes, we do have to keep pointing that out and not allow, you know, them to 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 focus so much on outliers. I love your your point about David Brooks and the and the uh the drinks or the the people who take the photos of their, you know, their massive F350 that they filled up and like, "Oh, gas is expensive." Well, yeah, I guess when you're getting 100 gallons, gallons of it, it is pretty expensive to fill up. Um, yes, it is difficult to get people to focus on statistics, but it should definitely be a part of this, both on the media side and the politician side.
Um, that is unfortunately all the time we have for this first hour of the show, but there's a lot more coming. So if you've been listening on the podcast, thank you. Please rate and review us on Apple Podcasts. And then head over to the YouTube channel because we upload clips from the aftermath, which is going to be coming up with a bunch of fun topics right after this break. <laughs> 